All right, guys, welcome back to the hand critiques. This is part two. And you're watching the free version of the critique session. Um, in this one, I'm going to focus on one problem, which was uh, designing fingers. I felt like you guys could make your fingers look a little bit better. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a few tips on designing fingers. If you want to watch the full premium version, go to progo.com slash anatomy, and you'll see the, all the critiques for everybody that I did. All right, let's do it. So let's talk a little bit about finger design. In this case, like let's take just take a look at the pinky. Um, what I'm noticing you doing is a lot of the same curve over and over again for the fat pads at the bottom. So you got one, two, three curves. I mean, you got the same thing going on in all the other fingers. Just the same curve over and over again. I want to see a little more variety, and I want you to put curves in when you feel like the curves will help the gesture of that part of the finger and put more straights where you think it'll help the gesture where you know a straight would be better um, or an S curve and how much of a C curve is, is going to be there. So uh, first of all variety and, and, and second you know, try to find a gestural flow through the whole finger. You kind of have one on the back I kind of see like a, a subtle S curve so that's good but then you don't really follow that same gesture on the front. And you should a little bit. So let's, let's redraw that finger. So I have kind of an S curve. I'm going to exaggerate that a little bit, actually. I kind of like how this swoops back this way at the tip of the finger. And I'm showing knuckles, knuckle indications over here. But overall, it is kind of an S-curve shape. Okay, tip of the finger. And I'm not going to start with those three curves of the different segments. I'm going to start with the gesture. So that's the flow I want the pinky to go in. Now I can add curves depending on where I want to show more bend. I feel like this first segment has the most bend. So let's say this, you know, if I put this crease in, I'm going to show a pretty strong crease, maybe even a combination of two lines. You don't have to. I mean, that's just a choice, but maybe I'll do that with this one. And then curve here, showing a little bit of a pinch. Then in the middle segment, I'm going to do more of a straight. And then in the last one, it's more of a, a swoop back this way to a point on the finger. And the crease on the, in this area between the second and third segment, I'm not going to put as deep of a crease because, you know, this finger is bending or this segment is bending back. You know, it's not pinching as much as the, the first and second segments are. So I'm going to still add that little crease, but I'm going to put it real subtle like that. So now I'm, I'm showing more tension and action in this area, less in this area. And I have variety in my contour. Curve, straight, and then swoop back this way. So the, the swoop in here is, an, is a different shape than this one here. And then also I have gesture in the back. So overall, just a much more interesting shape, much more dynamic shape. There's more variety. I'm not, you know, falling for that snowman trap where, you know, you guys know the snowman effect. You don't do that. Now, I don't think you are doing that. You are adding some, um, some good variety on the back plane, but you kind of have half of a snowman effect where you have that same shape over and over again on the fat pad. Okay, let's take a look at one more of your drawings. So with this one, I have a side-by-side -side comparison left one is yours, the right one is my example. This was just, I think, the quickest way for me to, to really point out the, the key differences that I want you to start thinking about. So you have details in yours, right? You have crease, 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 crease. You have these little wrinkles in here. You know, you're, you're starting to throw in all of these little details throughout the, the surface of the skin. I have them too. I probably actually have more details. But 
those details that I'm putting in don't hide the main structure. For example, look at right in here, you can feel very obvious, a, a very obvious box or a side plane right there on mine. Even with all the little creases going across it, I still have a very obvious core shadow that you can see the direction. Yours is a lot more broken up. So let me erase my lines just so you can actually see the drawing. I started with that line going across the side plane and then I broke it up with some creases and you can still see that side plane. The other thing is that your creases, like on the fingers, they don't show either the gesture or the structure. They're just flat just divisions of the segments. Like if you look at this pinky again, what you drew is more like you maybe started with a flat outline and then you divided it like that into these segments. What I'm thinking about is first kind of this, you know, the same thing as you, it's just kind of an overall shape. But I'm thinking of exaggerating the gesture a little more. So there's that pinky shape, the gesture of the pinky shape. And now when I add the divisions of those creases, I'm going to think of the volumes and how they overlap. So the overlap of the creases, or, or the overlap of these different segments on the contour, is more important than the crease itself. So right there, you see that overlap? This part overlaps this part. And then in the middle, it gets much lighter. Even in here, if you look at mine, it almost disappears. I mean, you can see some tone in there, but it's not a sharp line like what you did on yours. Very sharp crease. Mine kind of softens out, gets much lighter, and then you can kind of see a little bit darker in there as it creases. It's a lot more obvious actually in the second segment where I have overlap here, gets a little lighter and softer, and then again overlap here. Okay, so started with the gesture, figuring out my flow, and then going in and getting in the overlaps between those creases, because this finger is coming at us, and you have to show that there's depth. One really good way of showing depth is overlap. We have three segments, so okay, the first segment, the one that's closer to us, has to be in front of the second one, and the second one has to be in front of the third one. So the best way to show that is with these little overlaps on the side. The stuff in the middle, the creases of the skin, the ones that are permanent, um, those can be much lighter. They don't really show the motion very well. If I go real deep in there and I put that in, that flattens it out. Because it doesn't, you know, the finger's not bending. If, I'll do it with the one without the glove. If I bend my pinky, then these, cre these creases become folds and they become much deeper. And then that actually does show the gesture. But when it's straight like that, putting creases in here doesn't help to show anything about the motion of that pinky. Okay, so, so this is flat, whereas this is three-dimensional, and at the same time, it's dynamic. Those are like two competing things, but they, they actually, ha you have more motion and more structure when you do it this way, and in here you have less motion and less structure. Another little area on this hand that, to point out that same concept, it, where I'm thinking about the motion of the hand and I'm designing the folds to show that motion, is in this area here. Notice on yours you have, you know, a few little creases here and there, they're just really small spots, whereas on mine I'm showing this, this motion, how the pinky is pulling the skin away from the ring and middle finger, and it's kind of stretching between those, those fingers. So let me erase that so you can see it again. There, you can, you can feel that skin stretching, and that's exactly what's happening. The pinky's pulling the skin. And then in here, it's pinching in this area. 
because the pinky is getting closer to that side plane of the palm and the skin in between those is actually getting closer together and it's creating that pinch. So stretch here, pinch here. I'm always thinking of that. I mean, these are concepts we learned in the figure drawing class with that, with the bean, right? One side stretches, the other side pinches. This applies to everything. Okay, so that's it for Nicholas. Let's move on. Okay, these are for Neville Harvey. Pretty good, actually. You're getting close, you're, you're thinking about the way the skin is folding, you're adding variety to finger pads and all that. I guess just a few subtle things here and there, like the creases that you're putting in here are a little messy. So if you look at how many creases I put in my thumb and then how many you did in yours, you, you could feel how I still have the kind of the important ones, like right in here, right where the, you know, the, the segments are pinching. I have that real, real big crease and then right under that I have another one and then they kind of soften out as they go down from there. And then everything kind of above and below that is just to show the corner of the side plane and uh, top or back plane. And then I also show the creases in here, but you know, th that's, that's not a core shadow, so that's different. Um, but see how much cleaner it is? It's, the design is, you know, my core shadow is like this with, you know, thick, thick, and then kind of soft in there. Or, or sharp in there. Yours is really chaotic and you got a lot of stuff in there like something like that and I can't feel those forms very well. Okay so next up is Nick Valente. I wanted to show yours because it's another thing about finger design and in this case it's more of it's not the snowman effect where you're showing too many curves. In, in this case you have the sausage effect just kinda looks like I don't know like a hot dog. You don't have too many repeating shapes, but you, all, you just have one boring shape. And it's repeating shapes with it, uh, of the fingers themselves rather than repeating shapes within the fingers, right? Each finger is that same sausage shape. Um, so uh, it's the same problem, really. You just have repeating shapes, no variety, but it's different shapes that you're repeating. You're repeating the same shape for each finger, and then you, kinda, you also just kind of added these creases they're not overlaps, they're just lines on top of the form. So, yeah, this is just, you're kind of just adding lines. That doesn't really help to show anything. So same on this hand in here. That's a sausage, 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 sausage. Remember that design that I talked about? So if I was to draw this uh, ring finger, I would start with the back a little curved, and then a little less curved. The first segment has uh, more of a curve, then the second segment is straight, and then the third segment is uh, it, it's, it, it's pointier. It, it, it tapers to a point. There you go. Uh, and then make sure you show the overlaps in here. Maybe a little bit in here for, a, for an overlap. There's more pinch in here, so I'm going to make that overlap a little deeper. I might be going too too far with that. Anyway, this shows a little bit more gesture. It's not a simple sausage shape. There's a little more variety to all of the all of the contour shapes. So sausage, no. Gesture, yes. This one is from Jacqueline Quijano. I want to start by saying thank you for providing your photo reference. You didn't work for many of the ones I provided, uh, which is fine, but as long as you provide the reference, you, you, you know, it looks like it's your own hand. So take a picture, show us what you're drawing from so that we can help you better. We can, it's a lot easier for us to see uh, you know, where you went wrong. And this is another finger design issue. So remember that snowman I was talking about? There it is. You even, you even have it on the back the back edge, which is more bony. You can't really see it. You're not looking straight straight at the palm. You're, it's kind of turning and you're, you're starting to see a little bit of the back edge of the finger. So you're, you're gonna see some joint information. So that's a great place to take away that snowman effect. Same thing on the thumb. 
I mean, in here, I'm seeing a nice swoop back and then a little bit of uh, joint information. I'm not seeing snowman bumps. You have two of them right in there. You even kind of added one at the base in there. So really be careful about that snowman. Let me redraw your thumb. So as I was saying, at the base or in here, I'm seeing a nice swoop backward. There's a little joint in here, tapers to a, a nice point. And then this last piece, very much like that, you know, remember the dog head of the thumb? So there it is, dog head, swoop at the bottom. And then I'm going to straighten this one, this part out a little bit. I made it a little too thin though, so let's bring it back out. There you go. And I'm straightening out just for variety. I do see a little curve in there, but I don't think that that curve will add anything to it. I feel like adding the variety is a little bit better here. Another knuckle back here. A little more roundness for the thinner eminence and actually bring it in. The way your hand in, locks into the wrist, I feel like it's a little bit too, the wrist is too high. So I'm going to bring that wrist down, a little swoop in here, I think, yeah, yeah, there's a, the tendon from the, the thumb creates a nice curve in here. And then down here, I'm going to have less of a pinch. Oh, I totally forgot to look at your, your hand. Yeah, you have more of a swoop in here, but a more obvious step down. In here, I feel like it's a little more subtle, but there is an overlap. But there's not as much of a plane change. This is, feels more like a straight line. This one is obviously more of a step. So the, the wrist needs to lower. But there is still a, an overlap in here. So something more like that. A more subtle overlap, but there is one. So there you go. That, that's how I would lock that in. Maybe overall, actually, the, the wrist needs to be bigger. Fingers too skinny. You just need to add a little more bulk to it. You've lengthened it a little too much. Okay, but anyway, the, the whole point here was to show designing the thumb, adding shapes in there that are not just snowman shapes. Think more of the gesture. Think about, is this a tendon that's curving backwards? Is this a, a, a joint? Is it bone? Or is it a fat pad? If it's a fat pad at the bottom, how can I design the fat pads to have a little more variety? Okay, that's the, the basic concept there. All right, thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, everybody who participated in the discussions, um, who submitted their assignments. Uh, it really does help for all of you guys to, to learn if you guys are talking to each other about it and sharing your work and trying to help others fix their problems. Um, so, yeah, keep doing that. Keep posting in the groups. And if you're watching the free version uh, on YouTube, there is an extended premium version of this critique, and actually most lessons have extended versions along with like ebooks and 3D models and a bunch of premium stuff. So if you are interested in getting more serious in your anatomy, go to proco.com slash anatomy. All right, thank you guys.